Just a bit of a background on Tebo. We uh, a services group, um, and we operate across multiple services. So facilities management. So you were with us now, and on the facility side, we do engineering, energy, um, space design, turnkey projects, and broad-based facilities management for uh, various clients. So from from uh, corporates, big corporates, to manufacturing clients, to uh, companies such as Sun International, Sun City those sort of environments. Um, we also provide, across the group, we, we provide solutions such as catering, cleaning, security. We also have an international division that, that operates across 28 countries. Now, why we we talking about this is that we're affected uh, with, with the water issue as much as everybody else. And it's, it's, not, it's not something that we're not uh, um, aware of. And it's, it, as we were just saying, it's, it's actually starting off very similar to the electricity problem, the power problem we all had, we have, um, and, and it, it sort of becomes a gradual issue. Um, the big challenge is South Africa is a water scarce country, and um, and we all know that in every region in South Africa is having challenges with water. Um, it's also exacerbated by regional water management systems and councils, um, which really are affected with budgets and aging infrastructure, and I'm sure in one of the articles some of you have done, um, there's a famous pipe in, in Republic Road in Randburg that ruptured about 20 times in a couple of months, and the pipe is 70 years old, so that starts telling you why we're having some of these problems. And the challenge is, is as, as, as some of these areas are fixed, it creates a water pressure somewhere else, um, and then it starts to rupture pipes elsewhere. So. You know, water flows and, and the pressure builds up in the pipes and it's got to go somewhere. And as soon as you have a weak a weakness in the system, of course, it, it ruptures. Um, so what we, what we basically are, are looking, we've looked at as a business, is to bring in a lot of our innovation. We, we obviously work across the, the corporate environments and manufacturing environments, but we're affected by water in our environments as well. So you can just imagine on the catering side, uh, uh, cooking is a major problem on sites um, and then uh, w within a lot of our clients sites um, if they haven't got water infrastructure they have a problem with with productivity they have a problem with keeping staff at work and you know you've just come back from a lockdown situation over the last couple of years and and, and most companies are trying to encourage your staff to come back to work and and one of the issues is if you haven't got water, the staff obviously don't want to stay in the company, in the offices. So we um, have been working on a lot of solutions as, as, a, um, as an engineering business and as an energy business. A lot of our clients are, are asking for, for these type of initiatives or assistance. You know, we, we obviously assist, you know, with the, with the normal, or I call it normal, your, your bread and butter type of facilities, you know, whether it's your standby power, um, uh, your normal bu building fabric type of maintenance, but increasingly they've now asked now for for a type of solution for their for their water crisis. And um, w what we find is that it's not a one size fits all type of solution, you know. And and all businesses are different. You have uh, guys that are sitting in uh, multi-level buildings, single single buildings, and then others are in office park, um, and they actually. Um, occupy multiple buildings in the office park so your solution really needs to cater not just to to one type of individual's needs it's actually to look at especially in the office park a, a scenario where there's multiple tenants um, and to get various people to buy into it you know but it's more about making them aware how it affects them and um, how we can help them and yes it costs money everything costs money but when you look at it from an ROI and a return on produ productivity po point of view, it actually outweighs that, you know. So, so it makes sense for businesses, yeah. From uh, hospitals to entertainment uh, complexes and resorts, um, over here from, from a, a different perspective is besides just managing the and maintaining the infrastructure, we also look at the treatment and the testing of the water, you know. So, so we go through all the iterations, all the steps, um, not just the hardware, but also that we ensure that the quality is up to standard. And um, 
we really look at everything. So from the tanks to the pumps to the actual pressures, I'll show you that now, um, coming in from municipal. A lot of this is, isn't new. It was, it was done, you know, with the guys that, uh, that had some money to spend and things like that. But as technology has moved on, it, it has also become more cost effective or more affordable, should I say, um, to, to the everyday business. And it, and it can be easily scaled, actually, you know, whether you want to um, monitor to the ends of the, of the earth or, or you, you, you just want to look at certain things, you know. So, so it's definitely scalable, and and I think that's what businesses also need to realize is that um, it, it it's not it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg, and and as I mentioned in the beginning, it is an iterative process, also to get to this. So you know you can start off at one point and then move along so that you have everything that maybe even talks to a BMS for to some extent, and you can also have controls on it on your valves, on your, on your um, pumps and motors and everything. So uh, it, it, it's endless, you know, so it's not just a one solution, throw all the money at it, it that, that, that's not the, that, that's actually not what we're all about as well.